Hello, I'm Jasmine St. Clair. We're backstage at Second City Hollywood. In the green room, I just finished my one-woman show workshop performance, which is a very finalized, polished version of what the live hour-long performance is like. So it's been fun all night. <laughs> there are some cute guys in the audience. When did you get the idea to do this show? When did all that come up? Um, like about two years ago, I was started, I was at Second City, then I was at in some guy's podcast in New York, the SDR show, and the girl who's now my publicist was my friend, and she, we're just talking about it, and oh, that's what it was. I was a guest on someone's show here at Second City as a storyteller, that's what it was, and a friend of mine after the show said, you know, you should do a one-woman show, that's what it looked like, because you were so great up there, I'm like, no, I can't do that. I finished up the grad review here. That's like the highest level you can get at Second City. But along the way, I was just writing. So I have like 200 pages. It's already a book. And I just took it down to 14 pages. So yeah, like about a year and a half ago, two years, it was conceived. The stuff you took out of the book, was it from a diary or something you had before that? Were these just memories in your head? Were they... I speak five languages perfectly. And this is why most men don't date me because I remember everything. I could remember what someone said to me on the first date. I know what color shoes or underwear you've been wearing, everything. So I just wrote down a lot of stuff. I took notes like in my phone and just wrote stuff down. Then slowly I, put, I did a timeline and then I just put it all together. I mean, it's really tough doing that. That is because you don't have anyone else on stage with you to pick up the slack if you fuck up. And it's a scary thing when you're up there. I like the, bright, the lights extremely bright so I can't see people in the audience, but for some reason, you, know, you could still see them. But that's how I saw the hot blonde in the front. You mentioned this was the polished version. Was this longer when you were working and you took stuff out, or did you have to add stuff as you went along? Yeah. It was an hour and a half originally, and I still have that version for an hour and a half Netflix special, hopefully. Um, we took a lot of stuff out, because then you go into the rent with a weird kind of thing, because we couldn't do the transition from when... I worked for Rob Black and was doing this XPW thing and then got into the whole thing. When you do the longer version of this whole story, it goes into an hour and 15, hour and a half. But the weird kind of thing was just everything, you know, so many different stories that just pop up. And it was a lot of fun. I felt once I had the wig and everything else, I really, um, <clears throat> I think I felt like I was back where I was then. <laughs> Was there a reason you chose a specific part like earlier in your life? Was that something you wanted to get across to people? Well, look at the uptight society we're living in. I mean, these girls are practically castrating these guys. That's why guys don't want to talk to women nowadays. They're scared, you know? And what's wrong with a little shock? It's like reintroducing society to me. Um, I feel like it's too uptight these days. And yeah, I do like to shock people. I mean, I like Alice Cooper. I like Howard Stern. And... I mean, it's sort of, re yeah, it's reintroducing society to me. Um, and I, I think one of my favorite parts of the show was hearing all the Jerry Springer and Stern stuff because I hope that it set the tone and the temperature for people that were too young at that time or were sperms in their dad's ball sacks. I don't know if I could say that, but I did. Did you have a favorite show when you did the Springer and all that stuff that you enjoyed doing, the Stern show, the Springer? I'm grateful to Stern for everything. And he was hot. Then I liked rock and he played it on his radio. I like doing Stern more because I guess I had a reason to go to New York. Now with Springer, I would never sign those stupid waivers. I'd be busy yapping away in the dressing room and I wouldn't sign it. So I was, no one could touch me, but I could touch them probably. I mean, it was okay. It was fun. I mean, I liked me on Springer after I did everything, after the film the incident. Um, that's when I like me better because I was really snarky. I mean, I think I'm still a dick to some degree, but I'm a polished, refined dick. I would still say the same things, but worse. If Jasmine St. Clair had come up now in the social media era, you think she'd be bigger? Would this be different? Would this be... Respect. When you're saying bigger, in what respect do you mean? Now you have the opportunity to reach more of a global audience. And yeah. before we used to do interviews, came out in three months. Yeah, three right. Months. Now you hit a button and it's it's everywhere. Isn't that great? It's wonderful. Um, I think it's a lot better now. And, you know, it's no secret I quit the adult business 23 years ago. Uh, 
you know, I do acting now. I've booked a lot of stuff. I was just on the last season of The Deuce. I just worked on a film with Ice-T, and I have another film of shooting in um, March in New York. But I feel fortunate. And Howard, you know, I think when you look up, look me up, there's everything everywhere. It's all the new interviews that we have going on and newer photos. Of course, old shit's going to come up, but who cares? Without kissing your butt, you're thank almost you. as popular now as you were, if not more now, <laughs> than you were before. Oh my God, now I'm what, like what, what would you attribute that to? Um, it's called, well, people kept me alive. They never let me die. They didn't kill Jasmine. I tried to kill her, but she just doesn't want to go away. Um, that's all it is. It's just, I, I've existed in these subcultures. I mean, I was in the highest selling issue of Vibe magazine. That's a whole other fan base. And people, when they talk to me, like when I was talking to Andrew Dice Clay that one time, it was about Stern. It wasn't even about a gangbang or anything else I was talking about, or plastic thing I had. It's all about what was Stern like, or just this common ground. But when people meet me, is it because, oh, well, that's cool, yeah, you are in Stern, but they weren't really paying attention to what I was saying. But um, I think I just attributed to keep, you know, reinventing myself. And I worked my ass off on this show, literally, <laughs> for a while. Like my publicist just told me, I lost five pounds over the past two days. And I think also because I never got mixed up with substances like a lot of girls in that business do. I've never touched drugs. I did my first line of coke when I was 30 um, at a party. And I've done maybe my entire life five lines of coke. I dropped a hit of acid when I was 16 and went to a laser show. But that's it. I just, a lot of these girls get messed up and stuff. And besides, had I been messed up when I did my whole life so far... I won't be able to stand there on stage and tell it to people. And the other part is that it's been fun. And I like being in all these different subcultures. It's cool. It's better than being like the average run of the mill like actor or just whatever. When you were inventing yourself, was it to keep yourself in the public eye or try something new? Um, it was, well, with wrestling, it's because I really liked wrestling. And as you know, I was just sick and tired of everything that was going on at the place I was at. And I, I feel like I was just, that's being in the right place at the right time. Um, I don't know. It's just, I wanted to do stuff I like. Like, opportunities present themselves. and. I'm going to take them. I mean, here's the thing. Just the other day, someone said to me, oh, well, LA is the devil's play playground. Okay, no, it's not the devil's playground. Like, I've been here. I've existed here for 23 years and in New York, perfectly fine and thrived in any situation. So you're either going to dance with the devil, out dance him, or become the devil. So I, I, I pick three and just do everything in my terms and wherever the hell I want to do. And I'm not hurting anyone, um, not myself. This is really weird looking. Um... Yeah, and I've had fun with it so far. This is awesome. It's great. I mean, you just never know what else there is to do. And I'll always keep doing stuff because this is all I know. I mean, I think my growth was stunted at 25 when I got into this whole Jasmine persona. Am I going to grow the fuck up? No, because when you grow up, then you become old. And that's we don't want that. I mean, besides, like Charlie Sheen once said, you're only as young as the people you feel. And I feel about 26 right now, which is kind of old but now. What are you working on now? A weird kind of fame. My one woman show for it to get picked up as a live tour, a Netflix special, maybe a miniseries, but I'm also working on another movie called One Wild Day in May. That's in New York. Um, I'm actually up for a skincare campaign. So I do a lot of stuff, and I also produce a web series with my really good friend from Second City called Future Rich Wives Club. It's a complete spoof on... Um, Housewives of Beverly Hills, like those shows. So we have a lot of fun doing it. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm just doing my thing. Opportunities present themselves every day. Uh, what else am I doing? Making noise as much as I can. And that's it. I want the show to do really well. Uh, you know, you tell people the story, even in a bar, parts of it. It's like they gather around you, like you're gathering around a fireplace or something. It's been weird preparing for the for this whole thing. I mean, I find myself watching like the O.J. Simpson thing again because I lived in L.A. around that time and then I met him. But I just, for some reason, just t it took me back to that whole thing. So I don't know. I've been doing a lot of that lately just from working on this. Social media handles? Yeah. Okay, so Jasmine does not have an E at the end of it, but Claire does. So uh, twitter.com forward slash Jasmine St. Clair, J-A-S-M-I-N. 
S T C L A I R E. Uh, Instagram, The Real Jasmine St. Clair. I wish they'd give me that blue check mark. And uh, Facebook, Jasmine St. Clair. Jasmine St. Clair. And is a Jasmine St. Clair two page. Uh, what else do I have? Um, a weird kind of fame on Instagram. You should follow it. And there's also a Facebook page and Twitter for it. So, yeah. I don't read my messages though, because it's really super hard. Plus, my stuffed toy cat has a Twitter page, and it's hard to do her page too, and she's like more popular than I am. And how did she come up with the title for this? <laughs> First of all, do you know where I got the logo from? Yes. Or the graphic you do? Oh, no, I remember. The, the, yeah, the you logo. do know where I got it from, right? So I re remanufacture that. There'll be t shirts at the next show. Because um, <clears throat> while I was writing it, I was saying a porn, an ex porn star has a weird kind of fame. It was either going to be that or the Jasmine monologues or um, it was some other boring thing. Um, I just came up with it from something in the show. Like I didn't have the title at first, but eventually I got it. 